All right, welcome back, guys. It is Trey once again, and today we are going to do our programming language challenge. So we have to write the basically an algorithm to see if a string is a palindrome, and we're going to do this in Haskell. So um, you would need to download the Haskell compiler. Um, I have a video on how to do that um, if you're on Linux. So you can go ahead and watch that if you need to download the compiler. But if you already have that, then you're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. It's going to call, be called palindrome.hs. HS is the Haskell extension. As you can see, it even has the logo here in Visual Studio Code. All right. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go in and let's begin making this algorithm. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add an import for us to be to get the string from the command line. So basically you're gonna type in the name of the program and then you're gonna pass in a command line argument that is the string you wanna check if it's a palindrome. So in order for us to get that um, command line argument, we need to add an import. So we're gonna say import system.environment. So once we get that in, we have access to the arguments that are passed in All right and from here we can go ahead and start our main function so we're gonna call this main and once we get in the um, inside of this function we're going to use a keyword called do and this do keyword is pretty much just gonna run um, all of the instructions that come after it in um, a sequential order so before we actually get into creating this algorithm, uh, I'm going to explain what I'm actually going to be doing. So for, for the checking, we're going to use a recursive function and we're going to basically just start at the, uh, we're going to have two pointers. One's going to start at the beginning of the string and the other one's going to start at the end of the string. And then we're just going to keep um, incrementing the left side and decrementing the right side to uh, and checking the letters as we go and then once we don't have a match we'll return false and if we do continue and they're all matches once that left side gets greater than that right side then we know that this is indeed a palindrome so let me give you a visual of what i'm talking about so this will be the left pointer under the m if this main was what we passed into the function we'd have the left pointer under the m and the right pointer under the N. So as we're going, we can say that um, we'll start off and we'll say, all right, is this M the same as this N? And if they're not, which they're not in this case, then we would uh, return false because this is not a palindrome. But let's say we did have a palindrome and it was A, B, B, A, right? And we have our two pointers. Um, we're going to use this for the left pointer and I'm going to switch it up for the right pointer for demonstration purposes. So this star is going to be our right pointer for um, this one. So basically when we're going through and we're checking, we're going to have this a, is this a the same as this a it is. So we're going to move our pointers up on the left side and we're going to move our pointer down on the right side. So now we're checking the next letters, so on the left side, we go up one, right side, we go down one. And we're checking, does, does the A and the B match? I mean, not the A and B. Does this B and B match? Yes, it does. So we're going to continue. We're going to move this left up one and this right down one. So it's going to end up looking like this. And once we get to this point where our left pointer is greater than our right pointer, then we need to stop and we need to say, hey, yes, this is a palindrome. Otherwise, we're going to return false before we even get to this point. So that's how we'll check. And let's go up here and actually begin writing the program. So the first thing we need to do is get the command line argument. So whatever string that was passed in on the command line. And we'll do this by saying args. And then we do this little arrow. And then we're going to um, call git args so this get args is a built-in function for um haskell so we get that from 
the system dot environment so we call this get ours is going to put that the the list of arguments into this args variable so from here we can um this is actually the whole list though so we need to just get that first element out of there which is whatever was passed in so the way we're going to do this is we're going to say let and then we're going to call this str so this is basically the string and then we're going to get that from the arc so the way we get this from the args we're going to call head args so this head is basically just going to grab the first element off of this args list all right so once we get that first element we're going to put it into this string and now we have that first element which is basically whatever you wanted to check um, to see if it was a palindrome so now we have the string now we have to go through and actually um, create the function the, the recursive function that's going to be used in order to um, basically iterate through this string and figure out if it is a palindrome so let's go ahead and create that function now we're going to say let we're going to call this function check letter and then when you're creating a function header you need to pass in um, the parameters right after the name so the parameters don't go any parentheses or anything you just uh, pass them in as a space separated list so we're gonna pass in this string so this string is gonna be the same as this string and then we're going to pass in the left um, index and then we're gonna pass in the right index these two are going to be integers and this is pretty much just checking you know keeping track of where we are in um, in the string so this will be index um, if, the, if with main was our string this M would be index 0 and this n would be index was one, zero, one, two. so this would be um, 3 alright so now once we get that we can go ahead and do it, actually add the uh, implementation of this function pretty much so inside of here we're just going to need to um, do a couple of checks so first we need to handle our base case where the left uh, pointer is greater than the right pointer so we'll say if left is greater than right then return true because we know if our left pointer um, go uh, gets greater than our right pointer that means we checked every letter and we know that this isn't palindrome because it didn't fail yet all right and from here we're going to, need to say else and then we're going to say if so now we're going into if the base case works fine then we go into this um, second part which is basically we're going to check the letter so this is where we actually do the letter check um, to see so we're going to say if and I'm gonna put this in parentheses we're going to say if left no no, no. we need to say if string so we need to get the letter out of the string so the way we do this is by using double exclamation points so we do double exclamation point and then we say left so for this the string is obviously the string and then this double exclamation point basically says hey we're going to get an index from this string so you can think of this string as like a character array and we want to get an index from that character array and this left is that index so we're going to say string um get the get an index and then whatever this left because remember this left is an integer so whatever that integer is we're going to get that out of the string all right so now we're getting a specific character out of our string and now we need to check with the right so we're going to say um, the str double exclamation point and then right so this is basically saying hey is the left character the same as the right character all right so if it is then we're going to do a recursive call to check letter to get the next letter and check it out so we're going to call check letter again i'm going to pass in the same string then we're going to pass in left minus one and then we're going to pass in oh no no it's supposed to be left plus one and then right minus one so left plus one right minus one and this is going to 
um, recursively call the check letter um, function and allow you to keep going through the string until um, we either reach this base case or we're going to say else so this else is going to go with this if statement here and we're going to say false so if these two characters do not match then just immediately return false because we know it's not a palindrome so we there's no need to even go through any recursion just immediately return false so from there we are done with our check letter function here and now we just need to go ahead and actually call this function on for this string so we're going to say let is palin is palindrome and then we're going to set this to check letter str we're going to start off at zero and then we need to get the um the right side is going to be the length of the string so we need to get the length of the string the way we're going to do this is there's a built-in function for haska that is called length so we call length and then give it the string as the parameter and this will get the length of the string however everything is zero based here so when we're um, looking at the list it's going to be zero based so we need to subtract one from that length so we get the uh, so we're not out of bounds on our indexing all right so once we get that this will return if this is a palindrome or not and that's why we have this is palindrome and the last thing we need to do is print out is palindrome so we call the print function which is also a built-in function and we say is palindrome so we're just going to print out this is palindrome so from here this is it this is our um algorithm for checking for palindromes so let's go ahead and compile this so if you have installed the Haskell compiler then we can go ahead and run GHC this is the Haskell compiler that we downloaded and we're going to need to pass one flag in it's going to be called dynamic this dynamic flag is for um, adding dynamic linking selling um, the Haskell compiler to use dynamic linking if you're not familiar with dynamic and static linking just do a quick Google search I'll, I'll add a um, link in the description where you can check it out and uh, learn more about that but for the purposes of this video that is outside of the scope and once we add this flag we can go ahead and add in the name of our file for that we want to compile so this is our palindrome.hs file and once you get this, um, that's all you really need. There are some other flags you can add, like if you want to change the name of the output file or whatever. But we're not going to do that here. Let's just go ahead and run this. All right. And as you can see, it compiled, created some other files here, object files and stuff. But what we're what we want is this palindrome binary file here. Um, I'll open it up just so you can see some binary gobbledygook and there we go so this is our binary file and this is what we want to run when we run our programs so the way we can run this is by typing dot slash type in palindrome without the dot hs because we're running this binary not this um source file all right so once we do this we can pass in whatever string we want to check for as a palindrome um i believe if you're on Windows, you would actually, I think you'll get an exe file out. So you can just run that exe file in the command line with your argument. But I'm on Linux, so I'm just going to show you how to do the Linux uh, way. So you do dot slash, type in palindrome, and then you pass in what you want. So let's just try main again. And as you can see, our output is false. All right, so let's try one that is a palindrome like a race car so let's do race car and as we can see it comes out as true so as we can see this is actually working i'm just going to do uh, abba just to make sure all right so as we can see this is working so in haskell it's pretty simple to write a palindrome check and remember this this series is for you to understand that it doesn't matter which language you pick you can pick any language um as long as it's a general you know uh, a general programming language 
you can um, pretty much implement anything. So the, the key concept here is to learn the concepts of programming. So don't try to focus on the syntax of one language and how you do something specifically in one language. Focus on what the overall goal is. The overall goal was to figure out if this is a palindrome or not. So we just took our brains, thought about what we needed to do, and regardless of the language, you can we have Google. You can just Google the syntax. That's literally what I did in order to solve this. I just Google, okay, well, I know I need to have a recursive function. So let me see how we do recursion. Uh, okay, so I'm going to check to see, um, you know, if the left is greater than the right. I need to check that. So how do I do that? So you get the, you know that you were either going to use recursion or a loop for this because you need to, go, you need to iterate. So if you know this, then you like, okay, so you know that Haskell is a functional programming language. So it doesn't look like we're using loops. Let's go ahead and figure out recursion, you know, and then you know these things. So any language that you pick up, you should be able to do this because you know the concepts. It doesn't matter which language, as long as it's a general purpose programming language, you should be able to do it. Um, sure, you got to look up the syntax and just little things here or there that you might need to know um, how the language works, you know. Um, like with Java, you have the uh, JVM and, you know, just certain stuff that you might need to know about the language that could help you optimize. But for the most part, you should be able to write the code. Um, it may not be optimized code, but you can get through it. And then from there, you can pick up on what's, you know, how to do it more efficiently. But that is the purpose of this series. Um, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next video.